Hey, it's Joseph. It's been a bit since you may have seen me try to squeeze 38 small but significant sketch features into a three and a half minute video. Well, I'm back and I have more little gems to share with you, 28 of them in fact. And lucky for me, this time I'm not on a time limit. Be sure to stick with me until the very end to get a sneak peek at a brand new experimental feature that you can get early access to. This first gem is actually pretty huge, so hopefully you've already seen it, but you can now open Figma files in Sketch. Just head to File, Open Local Document, and choose your .fig file. Or drag it over the Sketch icon in the dock, and we'll handle the rest. We've also replaced the color profile notification that used to appear temporarily at the bottom of the canvas with something more persistent, in the title bar under the document name. You can now turn a document into a template that anyone in your workspace can use. Just head to File, Document Settings, and switch Set As from Document to Template. Perfect for repeatable projects and keeping consistent document structures. We've also added a selection of beautiful free templates to help kickstart your next project, which you'll find in the workspace window right below your own templates. When it comes to sketch libraries, you can now enable them just for a specific document by going to File, Document Settings, then clicking the Libraries tab. From now on, when you or a collaborator open this document, Sketch will automatically enable the checked libraries, even if they aren't enabled in the sketch settings. And when it's time to manage share settings, you can now do it directly within the Mac app. You can find share on the file menu, the overflow menu next to your avatar on the toolbar, or by right-clicking a document or project in the workspace window. Here you can invite others, make documents public, or change download, inspect, and commenting permissions. And now when collaborators add comments, you'll see them directly on the canvas in the Mac app where you can view and reply by clicking annotations that appear right where it matters. A new button on the toolbar also allows you to click anywhere on the canvas to strike up a new conversation. You can also now resolve annotations in both the web app and Mac app by clicking the check mark in the annotations popover or right-clicking any annotation marker and choosing resolve. You can reopen a resolved annotation in the same way. And because resolved annotations aren't visible by default, you can toggle their visibility via the view menus on the menu bar or toolbar, or by pressing Control shift n You can also hide annotations altogether to focus on your designs by pressing Control n On to symbols. When you select a nested symbol inside of a symbol instance that uses Smart Layout, you'll see a new Preserve Space When Hidden option on the inspector, allowing you to toggle the visibility of the nested symbol without Smart Layout collapsing the space it occupied. And now, in addition to holding the Option key to measure the space between a selected layer and a symbol instance, you can also now hold Command and Option to measure between layers nested inside of it. And we've added some additional visual context when you've selected layers inside of a symbol instance. You'll now see a dashed border around the parent instance as a reminder that the whole instance will move if you drag your selection. You'll also find a new button beside the parent instance to instantly select the parent. Selection boxes for hidden objects are also dashed now, so it's easier to distinguish them from a visible layer in the same spot. We've also added a new trick to pan and zoom to any layer. Just double click on a layer's icon in the layer list, and boom, you're there. Over on the inspector, you can now use hex codes with alpha values. Those last two digits will automatically be parsed and become the opacity value. Just remember those digits are hexadecimal and range from 00 to FF, just like the color digits. And when you're editing gradients, we now show more on-canvas information, including the position of stops, start and end labels, and values for angle, length, and ratio depending on the type of gradient. And radial gradients now resize along with their shape. Let's be honest, finding the right blending mode can take a little trial and error. To help, we've added foresight to blending modes, so you'll see instant on-canvas previews as you hover. We've also tidied up the list with some new labels for each group. Previously, using the scale command, you may have noticed that borders had a minimum width of 0.5 pixels. Now, they'll scale all the way down to 0.1. We've also added a new setting to decide what happens when you can't distribute layers evenly using whole pixels. Now, rather than getting asked every time, you can set it and forget it. You can now use the smart distribute handles to adjust the position of a selected group and the spacing around it when it's part of a tidied set of items. Previously, you'd only get handles for the children of the group. 
When you place or move rulers, they'll now snap to the middle point of any layer you have selected. When you're editing a text layer, clicking another one will now automatically go straight to edit mode, making it easier to edit multiple text layers sequentially. We've also added an underline when you hover to make them easier to spot. You'll also find that the width and height fields in the inspector now reflect whether your text layer is set to auto width, auto height, or fixed size by showing the automatic values in gray. But don't worry, you can still enter your own fixed values. Now this is where things get really interesting. We've added a new labs pane to the sketch settings window. Here, you'll find details of experimental features to try out, along with buttons to find out more about each one and share your feedback as you try them. The first experimental feature you'll find is smart layout in groups, which allows you to apply a vertical or horizontal layout to a group to maintain the padding and spacing between layers when layers change size or get deleted. We still have work to do, but you can enable it right now and take it for a spin. You can learn more and share your feedback over on the new Sketch community forum. I'll see you over there.